Jeff, you've been with PDAC now for over five years. I've seen your background and you can do anything you want. What has kept you at PDAC? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question and, and I think a great place to start. For me, it's been about coming full circle, really, Tracy. Um, you knowing my background, I am a, a geoscientist, a geologist by training, and I started my career on the floor of the PDAC uh, about 20, 21 years ago. Uh, so I've been... Uh, coming to the convention for that amount of time. And I got my first job, as I said, on the floor of the PDAC convention as a geologist student looking for opportunities in the industry. Uh, and it really did, so this convention and, and this organization helped open that door for me, uh, gave me that start, gave me that opportunity uh, to get into mineral exploration. I spent the better part of a decade in, in exploration and mining uh, before moving into capital markets. So that gave me a, a bit of a different cut at what the industry looks like, looking at it from the financial side. And I, I did find over my time there, realizing, you know, the significant weight that things like policy, like legislation, like regulations, how they influence the way that the sector works. So that had sparked an interest uh, uh, in my own own path. Uh, and then when the opportunity came to, to come to PDAC, I, I certainly uh, took that on because I, I did, as I say, saw that as kind of a full circle uh, coming back to where I started and, and for good reason. So what is your vision for PDAC or what, what would be, you know, the Jeff, you know, angle that you're bringing to PDAC or you'd like to, to bring to PDAC moving forward? When I think about what we do as an organization, it's, it's quite a broad spectrum. I mean, we are the, the world's leading event every year for mineral exploration and mining. We do a lot of advocacy. So within that, I think there's a lot of breadth for my vision or our vision to take place. Um, I have been fortunate enough now being here for a little over five years that I've been a part of two different strategic plan uh, constructions, if you will. Uh, and the organization we just created uh, or reaffirmed our strategic plan in, in the fall of last year uh, that helped reestablish what our vision, what our values are, what our mission is. And, and I really truly do believe in those. And when we think about what is that, well, it's, it's really about trying to win the hearts and minds of the public, of folks within Canada to understand what do we really do as an industry? How does that industry link with what they do, how they walk around on the street every day and the, and the, and the business that they conduct and, the, and all the things that are, you know, are involved in modern life. Um, but I also see a big change that's occurred over this number of years with that understanding within the public domain of why this industry exists is starting to rise, it's starting to, to, to boil to the surface. And I, I feel like that's, a part of our vision going into the future is making sure that that wave is sustained, making sure that minerals don't become again, you know, let's say a back pocket issue or something that's outside of the public domain, that there's an awareness there. Of, there's an inherent link between everything that we do each day and what gets brought out of the ground to help us make, do, make us do those things. Um, so, I mean, I, I think put it simply, my vision is to ensure that PDAC can be that connector between industry and the public so that people are just aware of what, what the industry actually looks like. Well, I appreciate such a modest and collaborative answer, Jeff. It's not what I want. So I'm going to come at you from another angle in just a second then. And let me ask you, what is the number one question that you wish more people would ask you about PDAC? What's, the, what's the, your favorite thing you love to talk about about PDAC that nobody ever asks you about? I'll take it from the, the like, what don't people are, or what aren't people aware of when they think of the PDAC? I mean, the immediate thing people think of is it's a place and time, it's an event. But we are a lot more than that. And, and my role 360 some days a year uh, is outside of the convention. It's trying to be a voice for that junior exploration company or that, that mid-tier developer and making sure that one, either the public, a provincial, and really the federal government understands where pain points are, where opportunities lie, and how do we make sure that those channels of opportunity actually line up. So it's just being an advocate, lobbying on behalf of the industry. I think many of our members aren't aware that we actually do that. We often get associated with some of the largest pieces in industry, like incentives like the flow through share uh, mechanism and the, and the things that exist around that. But we do a lot more than just lobby for flow through. Uh, there's been so many things over this last couple of years with critical mineral strategy being developed, critical mineralists being developed, new incentives that are being put in place, 
new investment funds or, or, or support funds that are, that are out there now. And the PDAC has played a, a real integral role in those coming to fruition, both in identifying the issue to governments and then making sure that they're structured in a way that's usable. And, and I would want people to know that we'll continue to do that, be confident that we are a source of information, but also a repository of, of, of ideas. Uh, and people with good ideas, people with issues, they should come to us with both of those things. So undoubtedly, you're on the front lines for trends or surprise trends. What would be the number one surprise trend you've noticed lately? And since I've thrown you a surprise question here, let me give you an example for our media platform. We've seen a, a significant uptick in interest in people coming to our media platform, searching for information on critical minerals in Africa and tied into Middle Eastern investments. That was something that wasn't on my docket for media planning last month. Is there something you've noticed for PDAC for you know 2024 that you went, that's interesting. We have a lot more interest in hafnium, for instance. Or is there something that you you know noticed recently? Oh my goodness, you know, increased sales at you know Costco for for gold Dore bars. You know, we're going to be selling a lot of gold at PDAC this year. Is there anything you can can give us? Thinking of a couple of things, uh, in, in the preface, we, we talked a bit about uranium, and that, that's been a standout in terms of its price performance over the last year in 2023. And that's really seeing uranium at the top of the bracket with respect to commodity prices year over year, something we haven't seen for quite some time. We're, we're starting to see that leak out into the marketplace as well. With We're starting to see more financings in that space, more junior uranium exploration that's that's coming back into favor. Uh, I think Saskatchewan in particular, you've seen a few hundred million dollar increase just over the last few years in terms of exploration dollars being spent in that province, uh, say from 2020, 2021 levels to where we are today. And that's a recognition of the commodities in a strong position. A lot of our own and other countries around the world are recognizing that nuclear power is going to be a part of a low emission solution of the future. So I think that turn uh, has been one that a lot of the industry has been maybe anticipating for some time, but it's actually starting to, to translate into commodity price and real activity on the ground uh, in 2023. So that was a bit of a surprise. So are we at capacity already or can we get in? Because I, I just spoke to a, several, at least half a dozen people this week with what you haven't prepared for PDAC. <laughs> get yourself a hotel at the airport, okay? Because that's all that's left. What is the current status for arranging, you know, uh, getting into PDAC? Well, I'll suggest there is no capacity for being in the convention. So, uh, you know, certainly more than able for people to get uh, registered for the convention. I think it's probably a good point. Just a, a small plug for us. Uh, the early bird sales are still open for about another month or so. So if people are just looking to attend the convention, you know, it is, it is uh, more affordable now than it will be in about a month's time. Uh, from an exhibit standpoint, uh, it, it is a, it is, Fortunately for us, a very popular show, as you noted, Tracy, and, and I think our boot sales have been very strong. Uh, we always do a renewal process in the fall, and, and many people have come back year over year, and that's the case again this year. So uh, I think we are nearly sold out, if not fully sold out, when it comes to both the trade show and investor exchange. But that doesn't preclude somebody from coming to the convention, somebody being able to do some of that networking activity they're, they're hoping for. Doesn't mean they can't still have one-on-one -on -one meetings. Doesn't mean they're still going to be able to potentially link with other corporates that they know are going to be there. So while the exhibition space is, is fast or fully gone, uh, the, the ability to get into the into the confines of the convention and have meaningful interactions, that's, that's still doors wide open. And so finally, can you just mention any other last minute item that you would like us to prepare for for PDAC? I mean, we're currently doing a series on marketable commodities and, and booths you should find it track down and meet the CEOs. Is there anything additional you'd like to throw out? And thank you for your time. Of course. And I'd like to see us as a thought leader in this industry. And a lot of our programming is at the, the leading edge of sort of those thoughts or the, the best practices that, that get used in the industry. Uh, so to your point, uh, within our program, we've got lots of things that talk about commodity performance over the last year will be outlooks from a number of the major banks or or those folks that have influence on the way the market moves. We've got a number of sessions on critical minerals, 
where they're being sourced, what sort of public uh, supports there are for, for development, and, and how are these different policies around the world influencing what happens in Canada. Uh, and then we certainly have an extensive list of programming that talks about community relations, Indigenous and, and industry interactions, and how you actually move projects forward in a fully holistic way in Canada. So I'd like to think that there's a lot on offer for folks who want to learn about the industry. And obviously, as you point out, the, the trade show and investor exchange floors are highly active. And so there's still tons of opportunity, I would say, uh, to be able to come to the convention, meet with interesting companies, whether that's for an employment opportunity or for an investment opportunity. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for your time. We're all counting down to PDAC as we speak. I actually put some time into PDAC again today. And for those of you seeking more information, please go to the following website on this screen. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Tracy.